Welcome, on, uh, welcome back to Court TV Live. We're on Jury Watch today, and boy, are we, of course, in Minneapolis. We're watching the Potter trial and uh, watching the, the, that jury work now, uh, 16 hours almost of work. Also, though, uh, we we'll have our eye on that courtroom in, Mini uh, in um, New York City, Ghislaine Maxwell. That uh, jury has reported for another day of deliberations that uh, they have begun their work there. And then uh, out in San Jose, California, Elizabeth Holmes, it's still early. They have not started their next day. But lots of juries working uh, during this holiday week. Anything happens, uh, we will, of course, report it right away and get you into that courtroom in Hennepin County if there's another question or a verdict. Meanwhile, in October, a Tennessee jury found former 90-day fiancé cast member Jeffrey Paschal guilty of all charges in his assault and kidnapping case. It took the jury just one hour and 49 minutes to reach their decision. Here is a look back at the testimony from the victim and from the defendant himself. Uh, you said you all had dinner and drinks. What were you yes. drinking? Champagne. Do you recall how much you had to drink? I recall that I had three glasses of champagne. Who was driving that night? I drove. Okay. And um, did Mr. Paschal have anything to drink? Yes. And what do you recall what he was drinking? Double whiskey and Cokes. Okay. And so when you get back in the house, you said, um, tell us exactly what you remember as soon as you get back into the house after walking the dog. After coming up my driveway, the next thing I remember, I was on the floor in front of my staircase that leads to the upstairs. And he had um, me by the back of my head and was hitting my face into the floor. And I was screaming for him to stop. Okay. Um, is, that, is that all that happened? or? Did no, um, from there he um, dragged me up the stairs. Um, it's not quite a split level, but it's, there's like four stairs that lead up to the bedroom and it's hardwood floors and he was dragging me by my head and by my hair. He had me um, kind of by the back of the neck and we went um, up the stairs towards the bedrooms and I blacked out again. I lost consciousness. You, you claimed that it was actually Ms. Wilson who had assaulted you. It wasn't, I don't even characterize it as an assault. I mean, it was, she was, having a, she was having a mental situation. She was upset. She was aggravated. You know, we were both drinking. It wasn't, I'm going to beat her up, she's going to beat me up thing. It was, we were just, she was upset. So you believe her to be so drunk that she became, that, that that's why she became aggressive. So you think I'm, that that's why she became aggressive? No, I, I believe that she got jealous. I believe that that contributed to it, just like my reaction contributed to it. Um, I believe that she was just drinking, and, and jealousy overwhelmed her. Do you recall ever falling? I remember being pushed down, yes. Pushed. Falling onto Did the ground from being pushed. falling or stumbling into a doorway? No. Is it, okay, do you ever recall stumbling as you exited your residence? No, I did not stumble on the way out okay. the door. And also last time we, we talked, I asked if, if you were drinking Tito's and vodka at the brasserie in addition to the champagne and the wine, and you said you didn't recall I do not recall drinking anything other than champagne that evening. But it's possible? No. I only recall drinking champagne that evening. She was apparently watching me um, talking on the phone. And it was at that time it went from zero to 100. Uh, it went from everything was absolutely great, everything was absolutely fine, to I'm communicating with another female. Can you describe to the jury, Ms. Wilson Chapman's demeanor when you entered the house from talking on the phone and walking the dog? It was very aggressive, very loud, um, very accusatory. Um, that was her demeanor when I came in. So change things, things changed dramatically? They did, they did. What happened next? I walked in um, and then she tore into me. Um, and at that time, she was getting, she was loud, she was getting in my face, you know, I'd slowly push her back, um, just 
kept getting in my personal space, in a personal space. Um, scratch and slap, I mean, she was, she was doing things to me aggressively, but I don't think it was a, an attempt to be aggressive. I think she was just, she was upset, you know, thinking that I was actually talking to another female out there. And I guess we both had hopes that our relationship was gonna progress from that night since we were on the offs already. Um, Did the arguing and, and physical contact escalate? The arguing escalated. Um, the physical contact really didn't in a sense that, you know, I kept pushing her away. It was the argument where, you know, kind of enough is enough. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go home. Um, is at that point, um, she, you know, prior to that, you know, she was screaming and carrying on throughout the house. But at that point, I went to go leave. She attempted to grab my keys. Well, she did grab my keys and tried to bolt out the door. And as she went to bolt out the door, the door, this being a door, the door opened. She ran smack into the door, side of the door, as she walked out, as she ran out. So she grabbed my keys and turned and hit the door. Jeffrey Paschal giving his version of what he says took place that night to the jury. At the end of the day, they didn't believe him. Found him guilty under two hours of deliberation. I sat down with the prosecutor in this case, Heather Good. She talked about the trial and the challenges that it presented. Let's talk about sentencing. What are you going to recommend? I maybe you don't know that yet, but um, what should Jeffrey Paschal have in terms of a sentence for what he um, has now been convicted of? So, um, Mr. Paschal, actually, due to his prior convictions, um, is what we would consider a, a range two offender. Um, and so, for the B felony, aggravated kidnapping, he's looking at a minimum of uh, 12 years. Um, and, and so, ag kidnapping also in Tennessee is um, it's a non-probatable offense. And so, that means that, you know, even no matter what amount of time he gets, um, it, it has to be a prison sentence. Uh, we are going to ask for um, a sentence at the, the top of the range. Just given the um, the severity of, of the injuries to the victim here, given his uh, prior criminal history, uh, not only the convictions, uh, we also expect at sentencing to show that, you know, this, this was certainly not the first time um, that that Mr. Pich that Mr. Pichel has engaged in this sort of abusive behavior um, to his former spouses, uh, girlfriends, things like that. So we are going to ask for a sentence, you know, at the top of the range. Give us a, a reminder. What what are her pri his prior convictions, and what is, what is he looking? What will you be bringing in? Um, he he has two prior um, state convictions here in Tennessee for. Um, the sale and delivery of Schedule One and Schedule Two narcotics. He also has uh, two convictions from um, on the federal side of things from uh, Texas for um, drug trafficking as well. But um, spousal abuse or uh, abuse? Does he have a history of that that you alluded to? He he's been. Um, we believe it, again at sentencing to show that he has been arrested multiple times for this. However, um, the, the the victims um, in those cases did not uh, follow through. I, I guess with the with the charges, and so they were all dismissed for uh, you know failure to prosecute and things like that. But he has been arrested multiple times for this before. Um, he also, you know, we obtained. His um, he's, he's been married, I think, at least three times, and so we've obtained you know multiple multiple documents from his custody battles, from his divorce um, divorces to his exes, and allegations of abuse are just rampant through those as well. Heather, what would you say to domestic violence victims everywhere, not just you know your client? This is because you mentioned it earlier. A lot of times it doesn't get to this because people don't follow through. They don't have the, either the stomach or the support. Um, what would be your, your, your uh, statement to those people, if you will? You know, and so that's, 
something that I tell all my victims, um, you know, in domestic violence cases, uh, I think everywhere in the country are, you know, one of the, the highest number of cases that, that any prosecutor's office sees. I know that our office in particular, um, our domestic violence unit handles more cases than any of our other units, um, which is unfortunate. And so we deal with, you know, a lot of the times uh, victims will come to court and, and they'll tell us that they don't, they don't want to prosecute the case, things like that. Um, and, you know, for, for a multitude of reasons. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes those reasons are, are very personal to them and, and we, don't, we don't shame them for that decision. You know, I just, the thing that we always try and tell them is, you know, we're not mad at you if, if for, the, for not kind of following through with the case. Um, you know, I really just want them to know that if it happens again, that, that we're still here, that even if, even if you, you know, five times don't show, don't show up to court five times, you know, and you decide to do it on that sixth one, you know, we're here, we're, we're, we're ready to, to help you whenever, you know, whenever you're ready to let us. And I think a lot of people get discouraged. They think, okay, well, I haven't, you know, I didn't follow through all these other times. And so now nobody's going to believe me, but I just, I think they need to know that we do believe them and, and that we're always, you know, ready. And, and when, when they're ready, we're here. That's Heather Good talking about the conviction of Jeffrey Paschal. He has not been sentenced yet. That sentencing was pushed back and it is now scheduled to take place in February of next year. The clock is now past 16 hours up in Hennepin County, Minnesota. The jury contemplating Kim Potter's fate continues to work and we're continuing to watch and wait. Be right back. This is Court TV, your front row seat to justice.